Covering the electric vehicle industry comes with a unique set of challenges. We often receive a lot of questions regarding EVs, and with a ton of misinformation out there regarding EVs, it's not surprising that people are concerned. One area of concern is the safety around EVs. After all, there is a giant battery sitting below the passenger compartment on many EVs, and electric vehicle fires are scary because fire departments can't extinguish them the same way they would in a gasoline or diesel fire. It's important for automakers to take that into consideration when designing and engineering a modern EV, with each automaker having its own approach. Volvo has long built its reputation on building some of the safest vehicles on the road long before the first EVs hit the marketplace. Of course, every automaker strives to make a safe EV, but we wanted to know if Volvo is doing anything differently now that its lineup includes EVs like the EC40 and upcoming EX90 three-row SUV. To find out these answers, we talked directly to the source. We virtually sat down with Thomas Broberg, Senior Technical Advisor Safety at Volvo Cars, at the company's safety center in Gothenburg, Sweden, to learn more about how Volvo is engineering the cars of its future to be safe. If you were to walk down the street and ask people what they know about Volvo, they'd probably say something along the lines of safety. In fact, Volvo was the first to design and implement some of the most important safety features that you see standard on modern cars today. Well, we, we can start with a three-point safety belt. Uh, I think a piece of Volvo that you find in every car today. And, and over the years, we have made pioneered safety in many areas, child safety being one of them, with uh, rearward facing child seats, uh, booster cushions, booster seats, innovations from, from Volvo, uh, side airbags, side curtains, uh, auto brake technology for vulnerable road users and so forth. So we have quite a long list, uh, uh, but I think the interesting part in that is sort of the foundation for, for, for why uh, we have invented this, this or have developed these technologies. The foundation that Thomas mentions is part of the key to success of safety at the company. So why is the company so focused on safety? We have a heritage that comes from our founders. Uh, they made a very clear statement when founding this company that uh, cars are driven by people and consequently in everything that we, we do is a must in relation to, to safety. And that's sort of a heritage that we have been living with, with since. Uh, and and uh, again, taking the three-point safety belt as an example, uh, Niels Pauline, uh, the inventor, when he was hired by Volvo, he had a very specific task, and that was to help improve uh, sort of the restraints technology at that time to, to help uh, reduce the risk of injuries in car crashes. So uh, that sort of philosophy foundation from our founders in combination with uh, studies and research and research studying uh, real world crashes that's sort of the foundation for 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 all of this studying crashes as thomas mentions is a part of what volvo does at its safety center in sweden it'll actually go out and investigate volvo crashes to see what systems worked and what systems might need improved the company works with all stakeholders to learn more about the crashes people are experiencing in the real world, going beyond just computer modeling. But as we all know, electric vehicles are different than gasoline or diesel powered cars and SUVs. So is the engineering any different in regards to safety? The foundation is the same. Um, we look at the crashes, uh, the people inside the car and outside the car are the same, but, uh, but as you point out, engineering uh, may be different. Uh, we have different prerequisites to work with, uh, for instance, the batteries uh, and how we design around them in terms of, of making or keeping them safe as well. I mean, any storage that they have of a lot of energy needs to be protected. So uh, the design uh, around the batteries with, uh, with structure uh, to, uh, to absorb both absorb and distribute forces is different. Uh, so the engineering becomes a little bit different. And also, of course, depending on where you start from, if you start from sort of a, of a platform that is already existing, or if it's from a platform that is brand new. We also know that EVs are heavier than the equivalent internal combustion version of the same car. So surely the engineering has to take into consideration the extra weight. You always have different sizes of, of cars and you have different sizes of, of, or different weights that you need to consider. Uh, uh, so, of course, you, that means that the dimensioning part of the engineering becomes a little bit different. But the basic principles, I mean, they, they are the same in terms of protecting the occupants and, and of protecting sort of vulnerable parts in the car, like the battery, for instance. So 
that's when the engineering comes in. How do you do that in the most efficient way? And if you take, uh, for instance, how we design uh, the, uh, the the safety cage with different rays of steels in order to help protect the, the occupants. In the same way, we work with sort of the battery and the battery pack. How can we protect that using high strength aluminum and, and steel in order to both uh, sort of keep the integrity around, but also how we can use that in order to, to uh, distribute forces uh, through the car or through the through uh, uh, different members so that's actually an enabler as well since we need to have that structure we can utilize that as well one thing thomas doesn't have to worry about as much in sweden is oversized american pick them up trucks but he makes a great point that vehicles are out there of different sizes and weights and it's not just evs that are heavy do safety systems like volvo city braking need calibrated differently of course, you're looking at the efficacy, but where we start from is, okay, what is it that we want to try to avoid? And how do we need to design around that independent on sort of the weight of the car or the type of the car or, or uh, sort of the uh, size of the car? Traffic comes in all shapes and sizes, and road conditions can vary dramatically from the city to the country or on highways compared to streets. It's important for vehicles to not only protect the occupant of the car, but look out for other traffic. If we have a higher vehicle, uh, like for instance our, our new EX90, we have uh, a lower, what we call a lower load path in the front of that, so if that impacts a lower vehicle and will engage the load bearing structure of a lower vehicle and so forth. While crash and crumble zones exist to help protect the passengers and battery pack, how much of a risk of a battery fire is there really? I mean, if you take, even if it is a combustion and you still have a lot of energy stored in a very limited space and that you need to take into account sort of when you design, the, design around that. Uh, I mean, our principles in designing is that we should prevent or, or try to prevent that that should happen. So the first line of defense, so to speak, is sort of the protection of the battery itself. But, but then also you have uh, signals coming from sort of when the car crashes, you have sensors activating the restraints. They are also disengaging the, the battery, uh, these signals in a similar way, like the fuel pump in, in, in a combustion engine car. Uh, so those principles are there. So you have different layers sort of on how we, we, we address uh, the different. And then of course, also post-crash. Um, on call notification and uh, rescue sheets and so forth. While we couldn't pin Thomas down on a specific answer, we know that EV battery fires are extremely rare compared to internal combustion fires, which is the bigger point Thomas makes. The best way to survive an accident is to not have one, but also making sure that first responders are aware of the different vehicle types as they arrive on scene will make that rescue easier. To learn more about how General Motors is changing the way first responder sheets are distributed, plus see Craig in a fire hat, click on the pop-out link above on the screen or in the description box below. Safety shouldn't just be for the wealthy either. Some automakers include features as standard, while others sometimes have them as options. Regulations also dictate what comes standard in terms of safety. Thomas believes there's a good way to make cars safer for all. The uh, way forward in terms of sort of democratizing uh, safety on the roads, since it's in in incompatible, is to move forward with, with collision avoidance technologies and active safety. That's the way forward. If you have an electric vehicle, there are some steps you can do to ensure that you have a safe drive every time you leave your home. And make sure that connectors, cables, everything is in good shape. Uh, it's not been tampered with or uh, have any damages. Uh, when it comes to maintenance, I mean, a, a car today is a very complex, an EV and specifically, so you need to have professionals uh, do the maintain, maintenance and repairs on your car, obviously. So don't, so don't tamper around with, with them. That's sort of the main point. With people tampering with charging cables to steal the copper, it's always a good idea to make sure the cable you're plugging in is in decent shape. And while Thomas says you shouldn't tackle a bunch of maintenance yourself, it should be noted that EV maintenance is far less frequent and far less expensive than ICE maintenance. More good tips for EV safety while driving is making sure your tires are properly inflated and there is good tread life left on those tires. Also, make sure your wiper blades are still in good shape and not damaged. This is good advice for an ICE car too. We also asked Thomas for the bottom line. 
If you buy a Volvo EV, you're not giving up any safety over an ICE-powered Volvo. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's our whole approach. I mean, the, the people inside our cars and outside our cars are the same. And those are the ones that we, we are working to, to help protect. We'd like to thank Thomas and the folks at Volvo for their time. While it might seem like a no-brainer to a lot of you, EVs are engineered just as safe as their ICE-powered counterparts, regardless of what you might see in the media. Volvo is making some interesting and compelling products these days, and that includes the pint-sized DX30 that will eventually go on sale in the United States, once production starts in Ghent, Belgium. To learn more about that affordable, compact, and safe EV, click on the on-screen video link right now.